I will pray that as you move around, touching lives, that no one here will be left unattended in Jesus' name. Amen. Visit us like never before. Bless us by the power of your mind. Use us for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I welcome you to the worship service today in Jesus' name. And I am here to let you know that today is going to be special for somebody. Amen. I said today is going to be special for somebody. Amen. Somebody will be supernaturally touched. Amen. Supernaturally transformed. Amen. Supernaturally blessed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Who is that in the video I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. He will visit you. He will touch you in Jesus' name. We are going to be looking at the subjects of triumph. I'm going to be talking on the triumphant life. The life that triumphs. The life that is triumphing. And I need to let you know that life is a battle. Every creature will go through their own portion of it at one point or the other. Battle is a must for every humanity from cradle to the grave. You only will be completely free from having to fight battle after you are dead. But while you are here on earth, the battle continues. But I have a good news for you. As the battle continues, the victory continues. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, look at it. Coming into the world is a battle. Can you imagine? A child that is conceived in the womb had stayed in the womb for nine months when the time comes for the child to come it's a battle to come out of the womb and then that child comes out successfully you will succeed in jesus name understand that not every child makes it to life not every child makes it to life but you made it to life you will make it in life i said you made it to life and you make it in life in the name of Jesus. Now, it's not just being born alone that is a battle. Even growing up is a battle. Because not every child again lives unto old age. Sustaining life is a battle. Now you're matured. Now you say, praise God on this age or that age. How do you live? How do you enjoy yourself? How do you make ends live? It's a battle. The battle of what to eat. The battle of what to drink. The battle of what to do. The battle of where to live. The battle of who to marry. Battle continues. All through life. And then you say, praise God, now I am married. Hey, welcome to the forum of the married people. <laughs> Even after you are married, to enjoy that marriage becomes a battle battle and then while well, you are still wondering and that, about that and thinking about that uh, then you begin to raise children if you live in the country where i live are we in the same country i said are we in the same country you will understand that raising children in this society is what it's a battle it's a battle Gone were the days when you tell your child do this and the dad say yes daddy yes mommy this time and day you tell your child do this and they ask you why are we together and then you come to understand that the battle of health is still there how to be healthy and remain healthy is a battle dealing with challenges of sicknesses and the uh, infirmities is a battle and then you've been to church you've heard the word of god you've listened to the preacher you're listening to music again and again and then you understand that the battle to be saved is there also that for you to give your life to Christ, there is another spirit, another power warring against you and telling you, not now, not now. It's a battle. If you are born again, I rejoice with you because you triumph over that spirit. You triumph over that difficulty and you continue to triumph in Jesus' name. Praise God that you are born again. Somebody say, praise the Lord. I can hear somebody. Can you say that somebody who, who mean it? 
praise the Lord, you are born again. And then you understand that the battle of living a consistent, victorious Christian life is also a battle. So, the life is full of battle, no matter where you are in the world. No matter what part, part of the world you find yourself, no matter what stage of life you find yourself, ever, and then there is this individual that uh, put a song together, uh, John Peterson, and then he said, it's not an easy road. We are traveling to heaven. Those of us that are born again, we are made journey. You will not perish by the wayside. Amen. I say you will not perish by the wayside. Amen. He said many are the tongues on the way. It's not an easy road, but the Savior is with us. His presence gives us joy every day. Amen. And so, he says, no, no, it's not an easy road. But Jesus walks beside me and brightens the journey and lightens every heavy load. I declare, the Lord will brighten your journey. The Lord will cause you to triumph. The Lord will cause you to laugh in Jesus' name. Challenges of life, problems of life, troubles of life is something that every mortal man goes through. But the good thing is our connection with God gives us the assurance of victory. And somebody here will prevail. Somebody here will succeed. The songwriter said, yes, the journey is, itself is not an easy one. Except of the joy and the consolation we have is that Jesus is walking by our side and brightens the journey for us. And then, no matter how heavy the load may be, He lightens it. He is our burden bearer. He will bear the burden of your life for you. When we talk about triumph, we are talking about the declaration or the feeling or expression of jubilation. Somebody here will jubilate. You jubilate after you have fought and won a battle. You jubilate after you have become victorious in life. You jubilate after you have, you have mastered or you have mastery over difficulty and challenges. And so, when we talk about um, triumph, we are talking about victory. We are talking about success. We are talking about fruitfulness. We are talking about fulfilling life or being fulfilled in life. We are talking about becoming visible. Now, you've been in obscurity, you've been unknown because of your situation. Nobody cares about you, nobody's concerned for you. But now, because you triumph, you become visible, you become prominent. Somebody here becomes prominent. You become a man, or a woman, or a child of value. Instead of being worthless in Jesus' name, you become someone that is being appreciated, someone that is being respected, someone that is being cherished or esteemed. This is a prophecy for somebody here today. Somebody here will flourish. Somebody here will be celebrated. Somebody here will be elevated. Somebody here will be a winner in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If that is you, then how about your life? I talk about the first point, the transformed life. The transformed life of the triumph. The life of the triumph, you need to understand that if you have given your life to Christ Jesus, if not today, you will do that in Jesus' name. But if you are giving your life to Christ, and then we are talking about triumph, you will understand that a saved man, a saved woman, a saved child is a triumphant person over sin, sicknesses, Satan, and the, and, and the troubles of life. And such a person, because of that victory, is now being filled with the joy of salvation. The joy of salvation. That is why when David, in the book of Psalm 51, slid into sin, who touched uh, him, immorality and uh, it dawned on him that no, a child of God cannot continue in sin. Therefore, therefore, whosoever that is born of God does not commit sin. He cannot sin because his seed, the seed of God, the seed of righteousness is in him and so he knows whosoever that commits sin is of the devil. And so David said, no, I don't belong to this side of sinner. No, some 
something happened in my life. I fell, yes, rejoice not at me, oh my enemy. When I fall, I will rise again. Somebody here is rising again. Somebody here is rising again. And David said, Oh Lord, oh God, have mercy upon me. Oh God, according to the loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercy, he said, Blot out my transgression, wash me thoroughly. He didn't just say wash me, he said, Wash me thoroughly. And then he went further to say that in the latter part of it, he said, Restore back unto me the joy of your salvation. There is a joy that comes with salvation. There is a joy that comes with newness of life. There is a joy that comes with relationship with God. That no matter what is going on in the world, the joy of the Lord is bubbling on the inside of you. That is a triumphant kind of a person we are talking about. Look at the Ethiopian Union. In the book of uh, Acts of the Apostle, chapter 37, verse 39, this man, he left Ethiopia, he came all the way to Jerusalem to worship, and then he saw all the sacrifices, he saw all the ceremonies, he saw everything, but he was not fulfilled because something was lacking in his life. Something was lacking in all those ceremonies. Something was lacking in all those rituals, and then the whole thing started. He was there. He went through the whole thing. It was all over. The man was not fulfilled. I declare in the name of Jesus, you will be fulfilled. What you are searching for in life, you will find it in Jesus' name. And so, it was all over, and then he was returning home, dejected, returning home, disappointed, returning home, frustrated, returning home, unfulfilled. But then, he was to say, oh Lord, must I go and empty-handed? Must I meet my Savior soon? Not with one soul with which to meet him. Must I an empty-handed go? Oh Lord, I went all the way to Jerusalem, where the joy of my salvation. While he was pondering over that, he picked up the book again. Again, and then he was reading about the book of Isaiah and he was wounded for our transgression and then while that was going on heaven heard his cry I declare heaven will hear your cry I said heaven will hear your cry and then God said unto Philip Philip leave what you are doing right now there is a man knocking the door of heaven who is that individual I said there is somebody knocking the door of heaven and then Philip got there understand that what thou readest and then he said how can I understand it? except somebody explain to me before it was all over the man received the joy of salvation he became born again somebody here will not live here the same way you came i said somebody here will not live the same way you came and then let's read it together acts chapter 8 verse 37 acts 8 37 and philip said if thou believe with all thy heart thou mayest and he answered and said i believe that jesus christ is the son of god and he commanded the chariot to stand still and they went down both into the river both philip and the enoch and he baptized him and he baptized him somebody is about to be baptized with blessing Somebody is about to baptize with the fullness of God. Somebody is about to baptize with the power of the Lord. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way to walk rejoicing 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 is coming to somebody happiness is coming to somebody in the name of jesus christ of nazareth when you are transformed the transformed life of the triumphant you have the joy of salvation right there you have the assurance of salvation within you romans chapter 8 verse 16 says the spirit itself Bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Do you have that witness with your spirit? Are you a think so Christian or you a no so Christian? If you are really born again, no matter the rain that is uh, falling, no matter the sun that is shining, you know within you, I am a child of God. My name is written in the book of life. And nothing can take away my name, can blot away my name from the book of life in the name of Jesus. So you say to yourself, you reassure yourself. And Jesus said in uh, the book of John chapter 6 verse 47, John for uh, 6 for 7 he said verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me hath everlasting life it looks like there are people here in this church today with everlasting life 
I say it looks like there are people with everlasting life. If you are there, can you wave your hand and let me see you that you have a life in abundance? Uh, and no devil, no demon, no principality of power will take that life away from you in Jesus' name. For you to know you are triumphant, you have to be persuaded of that connection with God, of that relationship with God. And that is why Paul said in chapter 8 of Romans, verse 38, he said, For I am persuaded. Are you persuaded? Ask your neighbor, are you persuaded that Jesus is your Lord? Are you persuaded that you are free from your sin? Are you persuaded that your name is written in the book of life? He said, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You have the joy of salvation. You have the assurance of salvation. And then, as a triumphant believer, you are separated from the world. Your life is different from the people of the world, from the styles of the world, from the fashion of the world. As a matter of fact, we are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, that we should not be deceived that evil communication corrupts good manner. That means that as a born-again child of God, your friends will be different. I need an amen. Your colleagues will be special. I need an amen. The people you relate with in the church will be heaven-bound people in Jesus' name. First Peter tells us in chapter 2 verse 11, it says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Pay attention here. There is a way that the children of the land behave themselves. And I can tell you, the world, the people, they own this world of uh, that we are in. We are strangers. We are sojourners. We are pilgrims. Uh, this is not our final state. I said this is not our final state. We are passing through. We are passing through. The world is not our goal. The grave is not our goal. Our goal is the kingdom of God. I said our goal is the kingdom of God. And so Peter said in the 11th verse over there, First Peter chapter 2 verse 11, he said, Dearly beloved, dearly, look at that language, dearly beloved, look at that phrase, dearly beloved, you are dear in the sight of the Lord. You are the beloved of the master. He said, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly laws which war against the soul. So then, if you are born again, you are free from all these mundane things of the world and uh, you are over them. They are not over you. You are the one in control. They are not controlling you anymore in Jesus' name. You know, before Jesus left, he prayed the lengthy prayer, the longest prayer he ever prayed in the book of John chapter 17. When you get into the 16th verse of that passage of the scripture, Jesus now said uh, uh, that they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. Are you of the world? I said, are you of the world? He said, we are not of this world. We are strangers and pilgrims here. And by the grace of God, we will make it home. I said, we will make it home. You know, understand, understand. We're talking about triumphing. Not everybody that begins a journey finishes that journey, completes that journey. Not everybody that begins a journey finishes the journey strong. Not everyone finishes the journey well. I declare we will finish well. By the power of the Lord, you will finish strong in Jesus' name. If that is your case, if that is your story, if that is the world you are the one I'm talking about, then there is a word from the Lord for you today in Second Corinthians chapter 6. I'm looking at the 17th verse where it says, We have for come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and then touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. The Lord will receive you. So if you are a real child of God, true child of God, you are not just you are not just playing religion, you are not just playing politics with church, then you come out from the world. You come out from the allurement of the world. You come out from the music of the world. You come out from the styles of the world. You come out of the fashion of the world. You come out of the pursuit of the world. And then, just like we are told in Colossians, if you then be risen with Christ, you seek those things which are above and the Lord will keep you. The Lord will preserve you. 
John, second John, first John, rather, first John, chapter 2, verse 15 says, Love not the world. Love not the world. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man, if any woman, if any child loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Pay attention here. You say, that person said I'm a Christian. That other one said I'm a Christian. But then you see the world in them. You see the world controlling them. You can differentiate between them and the world. You look at their dressing, worldliness. You look at their language, worldliness. You look at their company, worldliness. You look at their job, worldly. Everything, worldly, worldly, worldly. And the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, what is the conclusion of it? The love of the Father is not in him. You know what? Within the week, I I went somewhere to refill my tank. Uh, this tank is not the tank of my vehicle. Amen. You know the tank I'm talking about right now. Uh, this is the one you may not like to hear. Pastor was hungry. Amen. Praise God. And then I needed to refill the tank, so I went to this particular, and I thought of what I could eat. Uh, so many McDonald's was here. I don't feel like eating my donut and then uh, buffet was there i don't feel like eating buffet and uh, what do i eat and then i was checking what do i eat what do I, and then the thing says go back home uh, uh, go back home my house is very far all the way in virginia go back home. and then i realized go back to africa amen what does that mean you need the real solid thank you they call it solid Amen. Where is solid here? To cut the long story short, I went to this uh, particular restaurant and uh, and then uh, as soon as I got there at the counter, nice restaurant, and then I saw tracks over there, and then I pick up the track, and then I look at it, nice looking track, and uh, I look at the person, and then I ordered my food and everything. To cut a long story short, few minutes after I sat down there, some other people came in. And and then they said, uh, is the bar still open? Then I realized, oh, they even have bar here. My concern was the food. I was hungry. I wasn't looking at the bar. The bar was right behind me. All kinds of drinks and everything were there. And then they said, the bar is open. And so they came in and then they began to serve them their own alcoholic drink and all the rest. Uh, and uh, eventually I said, but when I walked in here, I saw a tract and I thought this is a Christian place and I was surprised. So when I was done eating, I went back and I met the lady and she said, how was the food? I said, the food tastes great. Ten ten. Amen. I got that longer from our youth. Ten over ten. Praise God. And I said, Is this a Christian restaurant? Yes. Are you the owner of the restaurant? Yes. Are you a member? Of, and then I picked the tract again. I said, are you a member of this church? And she said, yes. Well-known church. Big church in town. And she said, yes. And I understand. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man, no matter who you may be, loves the world, and then you go to a place like that, they say they are Christian, they go, they say they go to church, and I saw somebody there, I think it should be because they didn't come to eat. I think it should be either the husband of the owner or somebody, and I know him in that particular church as a worker in that church. And yet they are selling alcoholic drinks in their restaurant. And then you sit that and you say, that church is growing, that church is growing. They may be growing in number. They are not growing the kingdom of God. Your body is a temple of the Lord. Whosoever, def whosoever that defies the temple, the Bible says, him God will destroy. That's why you don't compare yourself with other so-called Christians. For the fact that they can read Genesis chapter 1 verse 5 does not mean they are born again. That they can quote John 3 16 does not mean they are going to heaven. You need to be sure of what you have believed. 
Paul said, I am fully persuaded. Nothing will separate me from God. Nothing will separate you also. The Lord will keep you to the very end in Jesus' name. Come back to 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man, if any woman, if any child, if any student, if any youth, if any young adult love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh and the loss of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father. You see them. They lost after everything. You see them. They are proud of everything. You see them. The loss of the flesh is there. The way they paint themselves. The way they deck themselves. The things they wear. How they expose themselves. The pride of life. The pride of beauty. The pride of face. The pride of look. The pride of place. The pride of race. The Bible says, It is not of the Father, but is of the world. Of the world. And the world passeth away. And the loss thereof. But he that dwell the will of God abide for how long? I said for how long? You will live forever. In the name of Jesus. If then you are born again, then you carry your cross and you follow the Lord. The believers of today, in many places, they are not ready to carry the cross anymore. They want that kind of freedom. Go anywhere. Do anything. Say anything. Act anyhow. Do any job. And the, the Lord is saying, that is not the kind of salvation I have given you. Bear your cross and follow me. Carry your cross and follow me. You can hand over your cross to somebody else. You have to bear it yourself. The cross of salvation, you have to bear it yourself and the Lord will keep you in Jesus' name. And if you really have that cross you are bearing, you are a cross-bearing believer, then I get to the second point, the testimonial living of the triumphant. The, te the testimonial living of the triumphant. How is your life? The life you live on daily basis. When you really had the encounter with God. Or if you really had the encounter with God. Listen to me. It doesn't matter what is happening in your life. It will not change your conviction. It will not change your position. It will not change your consecration. You know, some people, it is when they have the title and the position and the recognition that you think they are somebody, you withdraw that from them and then you see that that thing they are saying is consecration, is no consecration, they are only loyal to position, to honor, or the honor of men. Look at something here. Joseph in Egypt, he, led, he, he had an encounter with God. You will have an encounter with God. You see, when we see parents this day that they are saying, well, you know, pastor, you know, brother, you know, sister, our children, this environment, leave them alone so they don't leave the church. Who said so? If they don't, if they are not in the Lord, what is their business in the church? Do you know the meaning of the church? Do you understand the language of the church? Do you know the power of the church? That the physical building is not the church. It is when they are saved. It is when they are holy. It is when they are pure. It is when they are serving the Lord out of a true heart that they are in the church. Just because you see them around does not mean they are here. Now understand this is not a social gathering. Am I communicating here? This is not a political gathering. This is not a family gathering. This is the family of, of the children of God. This is the garden of the people of the Lord. And if you belong here, heaven rejoices. And so, if you really belong here, let us tell you the mind of the master. I need a better amen. I said I need a better amen. Let us tell you the mind of the master, whether you are a child or you are youth or young adult, love not the world. Whether you are in America or in Europe, love not the world. Whether you are in the Middle East or in Australia, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I need an amen. amen. Shall I continue? Is somebody getting offended? Oh, did I tell you that sometimes ago, somebody, a member of the church that had been in deeper life for over 20 years, was mad that I was preaching against worldliness. And I said I will preach it again. I said I will preach it again. 
I said I will preach it again. Of course, they packed their load, they went to another branch. And I don't know what the pastor is preaching over there. That will make them feel comfortable. They can go to anywhere. Amen? If you are here, I will preach it. I said I will preach it. And you will enjoy it. And you will receive it. And you will live by it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Faith of our father living still. If the kind of Christianity they are living today is what the apostles lived on, there was nothing to die for. If the kind of Christianity of today is what the heroes of faith, if, if that's the way they live their life, they wouldn't have died for anything. But they forgot about where they are coming from. They have their eyes on heaven. We have our eyes on heaven. And we will not miss that heaven in Jesus' name. Joseph had encounter with God, the God of heaven. And this was before the incarnation of Christ Jesus. And then Joseph, persecution arose, opposition arose, trouble arose. And Joseph was sold into Egypt as a teenager. Teenager, listen to me. You will serve the Lord. You will live for God. And Joseph got over there and trial came. Joseph stood. Temptation came. Joseph stood. Bribery and corruption came. Joseph said, no, I'm not taking this. I stand my ground. You will stand your ground. When people talk about revival, they don't understand revival. They think revival is only we clap, we sing, we dance and everything. No, revival is holiness. Revival is righteousness. Revival is purity of heart. And the Lord will revive us. I said the Lord will revive us. When we're talking about triumphing in life, it is when you triumph over the challenges of the world, the problems of the world, the, 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 the sins and the immoralities. You triumph over all those. It's not when you are making so much money. It's not when you are getting promoted. It's not when you are getting recognized out there. If the world recognizes you and heaven does not recognize you, what shall it profit a man? If he shall gain the whole world, but lose his own soul. Somebody here will try him. And Joseph got over there and Joseph stood his ground. Look at this, chapter 45 of uh, Genesis. Genesis. This is the book of the beginning. The book of the beginning. Chapter 45. I read from this one. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And uh, he cried, cause every man to go out from me. There stood no man with him. Why Joseph made himself known unto his brethren? And he wept aloud. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. The time of your declaration is at hand. The hour of your revelation is here. You know, after Joseph weathered the storm, after Joseph endured the trial and the temptation, after Joseph triumphed over the flesh, over sin, over society, then the Lord promoted him, you will be promoted. And then, when Joseph was in Potiphar's house, nobody could say, this is Joseph. When, jo of course, God was with him because of uh, his life. And then, the trials of life, the troubles of life were all taking their toes on him. And then, uh, each one, Joseph overcame, leads to promotion. Each one he overcame, leads to promotion. Each one he overcame, leads to promotion. Somebody here, as you overcome, you will be promoted. And now Joseph got into the palace. And Joseph was able to say, I am Joseph. This is a revelation to those that rejected him. This is a revelation to those that thought he was dead. This is a revelation to those that abandoned him, that sold him. And he said, I am Joseph. He said, Doth not yet my father live? Look at what followed. Can you read for me? And his brethren could not answer him. For they were troubled at his presence. Lift up the right hand and say in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Lord. The Lord will so lift me up. That my presence will trouble my enemy. 
that my life will dislodge my enemy in the name of Jesus your enemies will be confused by the power of the Lord in the name of Jesus Romans chapter 8 verse 19 says for the earnest expectation of the creature listen the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. The world is waiting for your manifestation. The world is waiting for your revelation. But you've got to stand and live the lie. So that your life become a testimony. The life of Jacob and of Joseph was a testimony. Your life will be a testimony in Jesus name. Now look at another individual. The, we call her, we don't know her real name. And then she was called the Samaritan woman. Something was unique about this woman. She lived a wayward life, jumping from one man to the other. But one day she had the encounter with Jesus. Somebody here will encounter Jesus. She had the encounter with Jesus. John chapter 4, verse 29. And as she had the encounter, you know the dialogue. Give me water to drink. How dare you ask me for water? You are a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. They forgot that they are from the same parents originally. And eventually, go call your husband. I have no husband. Yes, you are right. Even the one that you, that you are with now is not your husband. And you already were married to five husbands. You sound like a prophet. Prophet prophesies. I profess a life into you. I said I profess a life into you. I prophesy turning point into your life. In the name of Jesus. Are you there in chapter 4 verse 29? The woman after having an encounter with Jesus. Ran into the city. And became right away the disciple of the Lord. Look up here. Look up here. We are going to read. But before we read. How long have you been born again? For how long have you been in the church? The very day this woman encountered Jesus, she became an evangelist immediately. She ran to the city. She began to call people, come and see. Come and see. The one that touched my life. Come and see. The one that changed my life. Come and see. The one that transformed my life. Come and see. The one that knows my past from time immemorial. Come and see. Now let us read. Are you there? Where are you? John what? And what this? Okay, let's go. Come see a man. Which told me how many things? All things that ever I did. Stop right there. God knows your life. He knows the number of your house. He knows what you did a minute ago, a second ago. He knows what you are used to doing in the secret that you thought nobody knew. He said, come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. Jump to verse 39. And many of the Samaritans of that city did what? believe your life will be a testimony i say your life will be a testimony because of that woman the bible says many of the samaritans that uh, of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified testimony he told me all that ever i did so when the samaritans were coming to him they be certain that he would tarry with them and he abode two days and many more did what? Believed because of his own word. And said unto the woman, Now we believe. Somebody here will believe. Amen. Not because of thy saying, For we have had him ourselves. And know that he, this indeed, That this is indeed the Christ, The savior of the world. The savior of the world. That woman had testimony. You will have testimony. You will live with testimony. You will go around with testimony. In the name of Jesus. Testimonial life. Life of testimony. 
testimonials living of the triumphant. Listen to this. There is a man called Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, you know him, was a tax collector. He was popular. He was known in town. He was a dreaded man. But one day, he met with Jesus. He met with Jesus. Does anybody encounter you and could tell you had an encounter with Jesus? Can anyone, before you open your mouth, be able to say, you look like a child of God? I pray the mark of heaven will come upon you in Jesus' name. And so, over there in Luke chapter 19, verse 8, Luke 19, 8, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him for food. Pay attention here. Testimony. Here is Zacchaeus. He had the encounter with the Lord. He had the power of salvation coming to him. And without any delay, Zacchaeus knew there were things wrong that he had done that needed to be corrected. Zacchaeus did not need any preacher or pastor to preach for one month, for one year, for five years, for ten years before he knew about the restitution. Right away, he felt, he knew, he said, I am ready. Testimony. Let your life be a testimony that people will be able to say, even the things you stole, you restored it back. Amen? And come back to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus said, if I have taken anything, if I have taken anything, what is it that you probably have taken from somebody? Money? If I have taken anything by false accusation, what have you taken? Their respect? You took their respect away. You took their integrity away. You took their honor away. You took their position away. You took their title away. You took their justice away. You knew. You were lying against them and they punished them for things they didn't do. And then you felt happy now that you know the truth. Or maybe you even took their spouse away. You took their children away. How do you take their children away? You poison the mind of their children. You poison the mind of the child of, of the wife. You poison the mind of their husband. And then you stole their joy away. If I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore it for full. Zacchaeus is saying, all the wrongs I have done, I will go back to the people one by one. You know, some they don't understand. Some people don't understand what Christianity is all about. Somebody came to me sometimes ago. And said, I am sorry, I came to apologize. I have been saying some bad, bad things that are not true about you. And I said, that is fine. Praise the Lord, at least you will come to say that. I said, now, go back to those people and correct yourself. That's what Zacchaeus said. Is that the Bible? I said, is that the Bible? Zacchaeus said, if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore it for full. That is why as a Christian, you watch your mouth. You watch over your heart. You watch the things you say. You watch the things you carry from what's up. Many of those things are not true. And then they tell you, Dr. Chikizi from South Dakota said this. Who knows who? And sometimes they will tell you something is happening in your city. You are in the city. You don't know what is going on. They put things together. They concoct it. And then if you want to read this, send it to how many people now? Ten people. If you don't send it to ten people, they say some things that look like they are putting a curse on you. And so out of fear, what do you do? You become a carrier of false news. God will deliver you. Anything you don't originate, don't forward to anybody. Are you, to, are, are you with me? Don't be a carrier of 
wrong information, no matter how sweet it may sound. Amen? And so, over here, Zacchaeus is saying, restitution is immoral. When you do it, you have a testimony. I made right the wrongs in my life. Amen? So, you also begin to live a life of holiness, life of righteousness, and then the fruit of the Spirit is really made manifest in your life. If you are truly, truly born again. Let's quickly jump to the final point. And uh, over there, we're not talking about uh, the triumphant life. Understand? The topic is what? The triumphant life. And first point is what? The transformed life. The second point is what? The testimonial. And now the final point is what? The triumphant life. I just want to let you know the connection and the correlation between the, the topic and then the third point. So you know that it's not a mistake because somebody is going to triumph today. In the name of Jesus. Open very quickly to the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 19. It says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions uh, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Understand, understand. We sang the song, it's not an easy road. We are traveling to heaven. For many are the tongues on the way. It's not an easy road, but the Savior is with us. His presence gives us joy every day. He says it's not an easy road. There are trials and troubles, and many are the dangers we need. But Jesus guides and keeps so that nothing can harm us and smooth the rugged path for our feet. And they come to now look. Look, said, Behold, I give unto you power. That's Luke saying, quoting the words of Jesus. I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. All those things on the way, on your way to heaven, you will trample them down in Jesus' name. And over all the powers of the enemy, the things on the ground, you walk over them. The powers in the air, you prevail over them. And it says, And nothing shall by any it means hurt you. There is power there for you. The power to triumph. The power to prevail. The power to overcome. The Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. The power over sin, over the society, the, the Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. You know, Paul said in Romans chapter 6, verse 12, he says, Let not therefore sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the loss thereof. But yield and neither yield yourselves or your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But then yield yourself unto God. You will yield yourself unto God. You will yield your life unto God in Jesus name. You know yesterday we were here and then somebody asked a question about love. And the person said is love conditional? I said yes love is conditional. And uh, you know what you have always said? Uh, you love unconditionally. Unconditionally. I stand here to tell you that it's a lie. It's a lie of the devil. It is a sermon that came from eternal security preacher. That no matter what you do, God is your father. He loves you. Yes, he loves you. But understand the same God is a consuming fire. All the promises of God are conditional. The blessings of God are conditional. You, you are not going to be committing sin, and then you say, let the blessing come. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? I can hear somebody. God forbid. And so, listen to this. Even your healing is conditional. Somebody here will be healed today in Jesus' name. Your deliverance is conditional. Your deliverance is conditional. Uh, your deliverance is conditional in Jesus' name. Uh, Exodus chapter 15. Let's look at it. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. It says, And if thou, that, the word if is the condition, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, if thou will diligently, carefully, Painstakingly, hacking to the voice of the Lord thy God, uh, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give air to his commandments and keep all his statutes. Uh, then look at the blessing. 
I will put none of the diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healed thee. Is there any condition there? I said, is there a condition there? Open to the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. And let's look at it from the very first uh, verse and see if there is a condition to the blessings of the Lord, condition to the promises of the Lord. Never let anybody fool you because they will tell you uh, whether you are cheating on your wife or not. Wife, love your husband. Is that right? Uh, wife, whether you are cheating on your husband or not, husband love your wife unconditionally. You are stabbing the woman, love your husband unconditionally. Your children, you won't send them to school, love your parent unconditionally. Now, forget about man, this is God, and this is the one we are patterning our life after. Are you there in Deuteronomy chapter 28? Amen. Let's read together from verse 1. Everybody want to go, and it shall come to pass. What's the next word? What's the next word? What's the next word? E. Okay, let's read through. One to go now. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Somebody say amen to that. That is the condition. Let nobody deceive you. And then if you jump to verse 15, it says, But it shall come to pass. It will happen. It's, it's, it will happen. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these was the next word causes. Don't be deceived. Be not deceived. Whatsoever a man so that he shall reap. And I am saying that the, the power to triumph is available. If you will turn over your life unto God, don't just let people deceive you that, well, because they will fast for you, they will pray for you, they will decree for you, they will do deliverance for you. It's all a lie. Your deliverance can only be complete when your life is right with God, when you are living in holiness and righteousness, when you are a true child of God, and so understand if you are sick here today and you will completely wholly turn over to the Lord healing is coming your way I said healing is coming your way in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and then you have victory and triumph over lacks over loss and over limitation look at the man called Jabesh in first Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10 the mother born him I told you the life is full of trouble he was born in pain he was born out of trouble and crisis and the mother said you are a cause child I declare and decree every cause upon your life I reverse them now in the name of Jesus no matter who has placed that cause upon you by the power of the risen Christ I command the cause to be broken in Jesus name and Jabesh and Jabesh called upon the God of heaven saying oh that thou would have blessed me indeed your blessing will be a blessing indeed and enlarge my coast your coast will be enlarged and that thy hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from all evil that it may not grip me and God granted him that which he requested God will grant you what you are requesting today God will grant you what you are requesting today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and so all the lacks in the life of Jabesh were gone all the loss were gone all the limitations were gone Joseph I told you about Joseph earlier on Joseph was incarcerated in Egypt Joseph was born in Egypt Joseph was not a free man in Egypt but Joseph remained committed unto the Lord consecrated unto the Lord and he served the Lord wholeheartedly even though that life of God got him into more trouble with man but the same thing that got him into trouble with God got him into favor with God somebody is in favor with God here 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and because of that what became of Joseph God opened the door for him your door will be open the door of your prison will be open lift up your head so he gets and be he lift up your everlasting door that the king of glory may come in and who is the king of glory the man who is strong and mighty in power I say lift up your head so he gets and be he lift up your everlasting door that the king of glory may come in I declare and decree every incarceration of your life is over Every incarceration of your life is over. Every imprisonment is over. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released by the power of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. But only, only by holy living, by righteousness, by purity, and by uprightness will that happen. Listen to this. Joel the prophet came and said, according to the word of the Lord, I will restore back unto you. What have you lost in your life? You have lost your dignity. You have lost your barrenness. You have lost a child. You have lost a promotion. What's all you have lost? The Lord is saying, I will restore back unto you all the years that locusts have eaten. And the power of destroyed. I declare restoration for somebody here. I said I declare resurrection in the name of Jesus. If you are there, if you are there, I'm talking about the triumphant life. The life of God, the life of the people of the Lord. There is delay over your life. There is denial in your life. There is destitution in your life. There is deprivation in your life. The Lord will bring you out. In the name of Jesus. And then maybe there is paralysis. In any way or form, remember, at the beautiful gate, there was this crippled man. Cripple, cripple. I don't know where you are, whether you are crippled or paralyzed financially. Your marriage is paralyzed. Your future appears paralyzed. Appears paralyzed because God has the final say over your life. No matter what man has said, God has the final say in Jesus' name. But one day came and your day has come. I said one day came and your day has come. Peter showed up, John showed up, and they said, Silver and gold we have not, but such as we have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, paralysis be gone. Stand upon your feet. Your paralysis is given away right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your rejection is given up right now. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Lord, your deprivation is given away. Your destitution is given away. Your procrastination is given away. Every hand of the enemy upon your life, they are giving away for the move of God, the touch of God, the power of God, the glory of God, for a triumphant life, for a triumphant living, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But understand, there is a condition, there is a condition, holiness, 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 and righteousness, purity, and uprightness, commitment, and consecration unto the King of glory. We bring about triumph in your life. We bring about victory in your life. We bring about success in your life. We bring about progress in your life. In the name of Jesus Jesus Christ of Nazareth, commit yourself to the hands of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. Now is the accepted time. Today is your day of salvation. I said today is your day of salvation. A day of connection with the Lord. Divine connection. Divine touch. Divine move. Divine walk. Divine power of the Most High God upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As I'm talking right now, examine yourself. Examine your life. Are you daily, daily? Living a victorious life over the spirit of man, over the spirit of fear, over the spirit of the world, over the society, over sin, over immorality, over over nothing. Are you daily victorious? Are you daily victorious? If not, be victorious no force. Come upon the name of the Lord. Come upon the name of the Lord. Come upon the name of the Lord. Tell him to have mercy. Tell him to have mercy. Most of us in I said, I tell you to say, what am I holding you bound in iniquity? Deliver yourself. Let loose yourself. Set free yourself. Get the prison door open. And the king of glory will come in. And the king of glory will come in. And the king of glory will come in. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nobody can do this for you. 
Nobody can repent for you. Nobody can restore for you. Nobody can restitute for you. Nobody can touch everyone on your behalf. You have to do it yourself. Jabez prayed by himself. Isaiah prayed by himself. Joseph did it by himself. Jeremiah did it by himself. The three Hebrews they did it by themselves. You've got to do it yourself. You've got to do it yourself. You've got to do it yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, tell him you are sorry for the things you have done. Say you are sorry. For places you have gone. Yes, 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 yes. They will have mercy. They will have mercy. They will have mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Begin to pray at this point for grace to live a victorious life. Daily victory, daily victory, daily victory over trials, on over temptation, over affliction, over oppression of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as you pray for that, you have to do that because we are getting to the to the to, to the next level. We are we, we are ascending up higher. We are ascending up higher because uh, you want to get power with God uh, to deal with all those problems. Uh, you want to get power with God uh, to destroy the works of the enemy, the powers of darkness. You want to get the power to break the yokes uh, and to Lose the answer. You want to get the power, but set your life with the Lord force uh, so that you can be empowered uh, and equipped uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, the power is coming upon you. He said, Behold, uh, I give unto you power. I give unto you power. I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over every power of the enemy. Begin to take out of it right now. I come against uh, every principality and every power working against against my life, militating against my life, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every serpent and every sour scorpion assigned to my life, hear the word of the Lord, I declare and decree, be destroyed now, in the name of Jesus, now you are taking authority, we are now at the higher level, we are now at the higher level, you are securing your triumph, you are securing your victory, you are securing your, 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 your success, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Every serpent walking in my life, walking in my life, walking in my home, walking in my family, every scorpion, biting scorpion, stinging scorpion, painful scorpion, hear the word of the Lord. I command in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let the fire of the Lord devour you. Let the power of the Lord devour you. Let the name of the Lord devour you. By the authority of the word of the Lord, I come against you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Bible says uh, that we want not uh, against flesh and blood, but against uh, principalities uh, and against power and over all the power of darkness. You are going to pray right now every principality. Every principality and powers of the enemy working against my life. Working against my peace. Working against my progress, working against my joy, working against my promotion, working against my stability in the faith. I destroy you right now. I destroy you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh yes. Arise, oh God. Arise, oh God. And let your enemy be scattered. Let my enemy be scattered. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Step into your office, step into your position, 
in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, take authority. Take authority. That problem in your life, take authority. That yoke in your life, take authority. That band of wickedness, take authority. That affliction, take authority. In the name of Jesus, that spirit of delay, take authority over it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every properties of the devil in your body begin to tell them to get at right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Whatever that infirmity may be, whether the name of it is cancer, begin to speak unto it. Cancer is a spirit. Uh, tell cancer to come out right now. Diabetes is a spirit. Tell it to come out right now. Barrenness is a spirit. Tell it to get at right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, deafness is a spirit. Uh, blindness uh, is a spirit. Uh, command them to get out uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Foul spirit, tell it to get out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nightmare, nightmare, tell it to get out of the lion in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You must triumph over them. You must prevail over them. You must rule over them. You must reign over them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Pray for yourself, pray for your wife, pray for your husband, pray for your children, pray for your parents. This is your hour of triumphing. In the name of Jesus, you will triumph. You will triumph. You will triumph. In the name of Jesus, I told you, life is full of battle and you must be a winner. You will win in Jesus' name. You will win in Jesus' name. You will prevail in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come in the fullness of your power. I come with the authority of God. I come by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth against the works of darkness against the powers of the enemy of operating the life of your children and I declare and decree host of hell be sad the notice right now begin to pack your load begin to pack your load and begin to get out now in the name of Jesus for when I come in the name of Jesus Tell me who has the power to oppose. In the name of Jesus, the church of God has the victory. In the name of Jesus, the families of God have the victory. In the name of Jesus, the people of God have the victory. In Jesus' name. Spirit of rising and falling. Spiritual inconsistency. I come against you right now. Pack your load. Get out now in Jesus' name. I come against uh, every lies of the devil, the deception of the enemy, the activities of the devil, and the life of the people of the Lord. Pack your load. Get out now in Jesus' name. Every form of lack, every form of limitation, and everything they have lost, uh, I come right now against you. By the power of the Lord, uh, get out now in the name of Jesus. I declare resurrection. I declare resurrection. I declare resurrection. I declare resurrection. Resurrection of their head. Resurrection of their glory. Resurrection of their star. Resurrection of their dignity. In the name of Jesus, I command right now, who are those that have lost money, they have lost position. Oh, Lord, oh God, I pray and decree, let there be restoration now. In the name of Jesus. Joseph was the pride 
of his stay in his fatherland. He was sent into prison. You have elevated him. I pray and decree right now for everyone being called by the name of the Lord in this very place, suffering persecution, suffering opposition, suffering rejection. I command elevation for you in Jesus' name. Promotion for you in Jesus' name. I come against the spirit of delay. I come against the spirit of delay in any way or form. Delay in speech for the children. Delay in speech for the adult. I come against every form of delay in admission to school. Whatsoever kind of school it may be. Delay in getting married. For those that are old enough to get married. I come against the spirit of delay for children that ought to be working but cannot work right now. I command strength. Get into their bones. Get into their body. Right now in the name of Jesus, I come against those that are having issues with Down syndrome. Oh, hear the word of the Lord. Spirit of Down syndrome. Complication and concussion in the brain. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. I come against those that have been called upon the Lord and praying for one thing or the other and there seems to be a blockage. Oh, yes, Lord. I declare every spirit that is holding their prayer, hearing their prayer, I command right now, Prince of Persia, Prince of Persia, Prince of Persia, get out of the way, get out of the way, let the answer come, let the miracle come, let the blessing come, let the healing come, let the deliverance come, in the name of Jesus, I come against any form of paralysis, in any way or form, fear comes in the form of paralysis, shame comes, oh Lord, whatever the paralysis may be. Financial paralysis, matrimonial paralysis, academic paralysis, paralysis in their career, spiritual paralysis, ministerial paralysis. I command paralysis. Hear the word of the Lord. Pack your load. Get out now in the name of Jesus. Arise and walk. Arise and walk. Arise and walk. Arise and shine. Arise and glow in the name of Jesus. Glories that have been buried. The glories that have been buried. Ha. They're supposed to be somebody. Joseph had the dream. He saw the stars ha, bowing down, falling down. He saw the sheep bowing down. But people tend to bury the glory. Hey, bury glory. I command. Be exhumed right now. Be exhumed right now. Be exhumed right now. The people of the Lord will glow. They will shine. They will rule. They will reign. They will succeed in every area of their life. In the name of Jesus, barrenness shall not of the Lord. Wherever you may be, wherever, no matter the form of barrenness, I curse you, barrenness. You are a curse, and I curse you in the name of the Lord. I command barrenness back to Lord. I say, God, out right now. I say, God, out right now. In the name of Jesus, broken homes, broken marriages, I restore you back. I restore you back. I restore you back. Why? Wherever you may be, wherever you may be, begin to seek your husband. Begin to seek your husband. Husband, wherever you may be, begin to seek your wife. Let there, there, there be supernatural connection in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Begin to bless him. Begin to bless him. Begin to worship him. Begin to honor him. Begin to exalt him. Begin to adore him. Begin to glorify him. He has done it. He has done it.